Well, hello, Pythonistas on YouTube and Internet. Welcome to another video on Python web scraping. And today we are going to have another web scraping tutorial. We're going to talk about how to communicate with the APIs. Uh, in the last video, we introduced how APIs work. Now we, we are going to go deeper into how communicating with APIs uh, is. And before I do that, I would just like to thank you so much all for subscribing, for commenting, for helping me to build this beautiful community of Python programmers. So I bring you guys lots of videos almost every day to keep growing this uh, this python based community so thank you so much for supporting me and supporting yourself not at least because this is for everyone and i'd like to say especially thank you to these guys who have commented supported me and liked the videos and shown uh, lots of involvement uh, on in comments so i'd like to thank you all these guys Kunule Imbai. i'm sorry if i if i um, pronounce your name wrong balaji marshall patel harshel and drew conroy thank you so much guys and keep on working those tutorials and commenting and testing things out thanks so much guys and if you haven't already subscribed please do subscribe and hit the like button on the video okay now let's get into uh, to how to uh, communicate with the apis first we are going to talk, talk about authentication so although some apis do not use uh, any authentication to operate meaning anyone can make an api call for free without registering with the application first and many modern APIs require some type of authentication before they can be used. Some APIs require authentication in order to charge money per API call, or they might offer their service on some sort of a monthly subscription basis. Others authenticate in order to rate limit users, restrict them to a certain number of calls per second, hour or day, or to restrict the access of certain kinds of information or types of API calls for some users. Other APIs might not place restrictions, but they might want to keep track of which users are making which calls for marketing purposes. All methods of uh, API authentication generally revolve around the use of a token of some sort, which is passed to the web server, web server with each API call made. This token is either provided to the user when the user registers and is a permanent fixture of the user's call, generally in lower security applications, or it can frequently change and is retrieved from the server using a username and password combination. So we are going to use uh, Discogs uh, uh, API, and this is uh, the call we are going to make. This is my AP token key so I couldn't make it bigger otherwise it has to break the lines and it didn't make sense so we'll use this in our command prompt but before that I would like to show you guys um, this is uh, the Discogs uh, d uh, documentation it's very easy to follow and you file the information you sign up for for a for for a developer account and you can generate a token so this is the token that i'm going to use and we're going to use this method uh, excuse me this method so if we are to call for example michael jackson uh, and we put our token in the last and Michael Jackson with space it's a percentage uh, sign so if we call the API we'll get a lot of information it's terribly difficult to uh, read and if you're wondering uh, curl on Windows you can install curl so google that how to install it and I'll use J JQ for reading it 
uh, in a little uh, readable manner we get all the the JSON file if it's it's too big to read we can also put it in in a file mjackson.json and if we we have a mjackson.json file we can open that file and we can see we get lots of lots of information it's all i think it's almost 1400 lines 1700 lines for michael jackson and we can play around with it if we want if we let's say we want to get the stuff for nirvana as uh, as shown in, uh, in in the example on their page sorry for messing things up here I usually like to go to the end line same here if we do a little bit of nice printing it's really cool and if we want to we can search the api a little bit here and we can see that it has artist id of 1252406 we can copy that Okay, we have dug into the, the response that we got from the database and we can use this information, this ID, go to their API stuff and find, these are releases, we should go to um, artist. Okay, I'm on the artist page. Uh, just a second. Artist here. Here is the artist ID. And we can use this information to get the information on Nirvana. Type it with uh, pretty printed with JQ. We see we get get it nicely done we can it's easily to easy to read and we get all the information and if we wanted to go further for example we will look at the releases the release ID yeah this one and we would use the same call but we'll and we will use sort we can use sort by year and we can use ascending This is an invalid request. We 
it should be Okay, I figured out what I was doing wrong in this. There's a, I had a space in between here. It's not supposed to be there. So if we enter this now, we should keep all of the releases of Nirvana in ascending order. If we do 3D printing with JQ. And we get all the information very nicely formatted. So what I mean by doing this is if you study the documentation of any API you you understand how to drill down and get information to use in your application or your uh, scraper so that was just an example how you can drill down and also when you are um, so in our case in the first first uh, request is this curl here's we have it with a token this provides the server with an api cal api key value of uh, that was provided to me on registration allowing the server to identify the requester as sequencer sing and provide the requester with the json data in addition to passing tokens in the url of the request itself tokens might also be passed to the server via a cookie in the request header and we'll discuss headers uh, in greater detail very soon. Uh, but by way of a brief example, they can be sent using the URL package from previous uh, tutorials. You define your token in your token variable uh, with your uh, key value, and then you uh, do a URL lib request to the API with headers and put the token in the top and the token variable and then you request the web page um, this is one way of doing it and uh, there are other ways also you can if you have followed me on the mining data uh, from social media uh, environment uh, stuff the videos the tutorials there for Twitter Facebook uh, Google Plus etc you can this is a way of uh, authorizing your application uh, you put all the um, all the tokens in in your os environment uh, in windows you do set and with the, and you mac you do export stuff so definitely check that out i mean there are tons of way to uh, authorize your uh, authenticate your uh, application you can also put all the uh, authentication variables in a separate file and import that file uh, okay so uh, okay next we are going to talk about responses so as you saw in the free GOIP example uh, in the in the for uh, in the last video an important feature of apis is that they can they have well formatted responses the most common types of response formatting are extensible markup language xml and javascript object notation so in recent years json has uh, become vastly more popular than xml for a couple of major reasons first json files are generally smaller than well designed xml files Compare, for example, the XML format to the JSON format. Uh, and the XML uh, format is 98 characters, and the same data in JSON is only 73 characters, uh, whopping 30, uh, 36% smaller than the equivalent XML. Of course, one could argue that XML could uh, be formatted like this. But this is considered bad practice because it doesn't support deep nesting of data. Regardless, it's, it, 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 it still requires 71 characters, about the same length as the equivalent JSON format. Another reason JSON is uh, quickly becoming more popular than XML is simply due to a shift in web technologies. In the past, it was more common for a web server side script, such as uh, PHP or .NET to be used to be on the receiving end of an API. 
Nowadays, it is likely that a framework such as a Angular or Backbone will be sending and retrieving, receiving API calls. Server-side technologies are somewhat agnostic as to the form in which their data comes, but JavaScript libraries like Backbone, uh, Node.js, etc. find JSON easier to handle. Although most API APIs still uh, APIs still support XML output, we will be using JSON example in our tutorials. Regardless, it is a good idea to familiarize yourself with both if you haven't already, uh, because they are unlikely to go away anytime soon. And one note on API calls. The syntax of an API call can vary wildly from API to API. That's why I said uh, check out the documentation of how the APIs work. Uh, but there are a few standard practices they often have in common when retrieving data through a GET request. The URL path describes how you would like to drill down in the data, while the query parameters serve as filters or additional request requests tacked into the search. For example, in a hypothetical API, we just call it social media site, uh, uh, you might request the following to retrieve all posts by the user with the ID 123 during the month of August 2014. That's the first example. Uh, many other APIs use the path in order to specify an API version, the format you would like your data in, and other attributes. For example, the next line uh, would return same data using API version 4 formatted in JSON. And other APIs require that you pass the formatting and API version information in as a request parameter like the last line. So you put format JSON and, and the date parameters like this. So this is how uh, a short introduction of how to communicate with uh, with apis i hope you have enjoyed it and definitely check out the discogs uh, api that i have tried to explain in this uh, tutorial uh, in any case you need to study the apis like I said i have to repeat it many times because every api has their own own way of uh, accessing the data that you want to access so please check out the API that you want to work with. So this is it for this uh, video tutorial and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have, please hit the like button, hit subscribe button, comment, share the video, help me grow this community and thank you so much for being part of this community. I appreciate it. I love you guys and I thank you so much for now and I hope to see you in my next video. Okay, bye guys.